All right, good morning, everyone. Um, technical difficulties with my screen recorder, but I seem to have figured it out. So this is, yeah, I am recording, okay, great. So lab 12, let's go over how to do this. Um, there's a little reading here, and you should do that because some of the questions on the Google form that go with this lab are gonna be using this reading, so make sure you get on that. Let's just jump right into this. So report sheet number one, here's how you do it. You're given two seismic stations uh, at locations. That doesn't matter at all, actually. All you have to do is take the travel time and use the page below or use the chart below to get the epicenter distance. So P wave travel time, three minutes, 20 seconds. You find three minutes. Each box is 20 seconds. You move to the left, hit the P wave line because the P wave line is what we're working with. It says P wave. So three minutes, 20 seconds, come down. It's 1,600. 1,000, 1,200, 1,400, 1,600. You write that there. The S wave travel time for the exact same seismic station is gonna be the same number, but you should still do it anyway. So six minutes, come over to the S wave line, come down. Oh, there it is, 1,600. <clears throat> Do the same thing for Newport, Virginia. All right, report sheet number two. This gets a little more challenging, but it's, it's still pretty straightforward though. So P wave arrival time for station X in Annapolis, Maryland. So here's station X, here's the P wave arrival. It says P, you read down and it says one. You don't write one. One is not the correct answer. It says time scale minutes after noon. So that's noon. This is one minute after noon. So 12, 01, and no seconds, zero seconds. So it's hours, minutes, seconds, hours, minutes, seconds. It's like that for all of them. So just be mindful of that. So 12, 01, zero seconds, because we're on the one. So 12.010 seconds. For the S wave arrival time, it's gonna be, well, here's S for station X. We read down, oh, it's in between two and three. So it's 12.02, 30 seconds. 12.02, 30 seconds. This is just the difference in arrival time. So you subtract. You can write it out if you want to. You can do it in your head. It's gonna be zero hours because 12 minus 12 is zero. So zero hours, two minus one is one, and 30 minus zero is 30. So it's zero, so zero, 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 one, <clears throat> and 30 seconds. All right, that's a difference. Now, for the P wave travel time and the epicenter distance, you have to remember how to use the difference in arrival time to find an epicenter distance. And in order to do that, we'll go back to the lesson about this really quick. It's lesson six. And here I go over it. So once you have the difference in the arrival times, right, you subtract them. In this case, it's four minutes. In the case of your lab, it's a minute 30. You then have to mark off the difference here. In that case, the difference is four, but in the case in the lab, it's a minute 30. Just keep that in mind. You then bring the piece of paper up where the two lines meet the P and the S wave lines, where these two tick marks meet, you know, meets the P and S wave line. And to find the P wave travel time, because that's the first thing you have to figure out, the P wave travel time, all you have to do What have I just done? Oh yes, here we go. The P wave travel time is right here. Here's the P wave line. There's your tick mark. You, you read to the left. In this case, it's five minutes. In the case of your lab, I have no idea what it is. You're gonna have to figure it out for yourself. So you read the line here. You read to the left, there it is. Now, <clears throat> epicenter distance, you just read down. So you read down all the way. In this case, 
the epicenter distance is 2600. I just read down. On the actual lab itself, I'm not sure what it's going to be. But it's going to be something way smaller because the difference is only a minute 30. So I'm assuming it's going to be something in here. Probably in like the 1000 kilometer range, something like that. All right, and that's how you do that. So you do that for all the seismic stations. You read them. You put the numbers on there. You do exactly what you did for Annapolis. Here's the fun part. You now have to take all of your epicenter distance data and you have to make circles. So here's how you do it. The first thing you have to do is rotate this. So however you do that, you have to rotate it. The next thing you have to do is take a screenshot. You have to screenshot the whole screen. And I have Microsoft Paint. So this makes it really easy. And I just copy and paste it. There it is. If you like Photoshop or any kind of photo editing, you know, software, it, you know, it, it's pretty straightforward. If you have no photo editing software, that's going to make this really difficult. If you have no photo editing software, let me know. But this is pretty straightforward if you have something like this. So let's pretend for a minute. Let's pretend for a minute that this first epicenter distance is 2,000 kilometers. Let's just say I did the math and I figured out it was 2,000 kilometers. I now have to make a circle that has a radius of 2,000 kilometers. So just in case we don't know what a radius is, I don't mean to insult your intelligence if you are like Mr. Patchman, of course we know what that is. I'm just gonna do it anyway. That's the approximate center of a circle. The radius is the distance from the center to the edge. A diameter is the distance across the whole thing. But we don't care about diameter. So this is the radius. You need to make circles that have a radius that's equal to the epicenter distance. So let's do that. And what did I say my epicenter distance was? I just said I'm going to make it up. It's 2,000. So I take a line tool, you know, you know, you know, any kind of line tool, and I do it like that. I mean, you actually could print off the lab and actually do this with a compass. You know, if you have a compass, you know, some kind of compass tool, uh, you know, you could do that if you happen to have that in your house. If you don't, you can do it digitally, and it's really straightforward. So here's my radius. It's 2,000. I place it over the seismic station where the data came from. In this case, Annapolis. There's the dot for Annapolis. It's in Maryland. Now all I have to do is just draw a circle that has that radius. So I'm going to start off by just drawing a circle. I'm going to try and get Annapolis into the center here. Wow. I pretty much just did it my first try. Wow, that was awesome. So there it is. I just drew the circle, and I happened to do it almost perfect on the first shot. Well, actually, not entirely perfect. If you look there, I kind of messed up. But whatever. It's, it's good for what we're doing here. So there's the first circle. All right. Let's pretend this is, I don't know, 1,000 kilometers. All right. Let's pretend this is 1,000 kilometers. Same thing. I come over here. I draw a line. Oh, that's a circle. I draw a line that is 1,000. Okay. I find OKC. There it is. Oklahoma City in Oklahoma. And now I draw my circle. Let's see. You see how it's not perfect? I have to make it a little bit smaller. Mm, not quite perfect yet, or you know, not quite good. That's not terrible. Okay, that's pretty good. Oklahoma City is in the center of my circle, and there's my radius. All right, so what we have here is two epicenter distances from two seismic stations 
and what this has told me is that the earthquake occurred either here or over here. How am I going to find where the actual earthquake occurred? I have to draw one more circle, but because I'm not using real data, you know, it's not going to work out, you know? So when you do it, you're going to draw three circles and it should work perfectly. Uh, but for right now, I'm not going to draw the third circle because it's not going to work. So the epicenter could be over here, over here. When you draw your third circle, it should converge somewhere here, you know, or, you know, somewhere where it crosses. Once you find the location, you just put an X and you're done. Again, you need three circles. This is just two. You have to have that third circle. That's called triangulation. That's pretty much it for the lab. There are questions down here, but you're not going to do these. I've reduced the number of questions a lot. Uh, and you're doing this all on the Google form. So nothing on here. If you want to print off the lab, you can. If you have, you know, a compass and you want to and you want to do this using a compass, you can do that. You know, compasses draw uh, perfect circles. You know, that's what like a, a compass tool can do. So you can do that. But yeah, that's how you do it digitally. If you have any questions, please just email me.